business, declaration of interest. Uh, councils, you are asked to consider whether you have any disclosable pecuniary or any development interest in connection with any of the matters to be determined at this meeting, and if so, to declare in state the nature of such an interest. May I remind you that you should state the item number and title of the nature of interest in question. Mm -hmm. Are there any declarations of interest? Moving on to the to uh, civic matters announcements. I have been notified of the following apologies, Councillor Andrew Watson and Councillor Kathy Watson. Is there any other apologies? Yes, we have a Councillor Trade Vocal and Councillor Ball.
with individual city regions around devolving powers uh, and responsibilities last year. And we saw the first such deal concluded with, with uh, Greater Manchester uh, just before last year's uh, election. And since then, clearly, the government has been in discussion with a number of city regions, including our own, uh, around similar deals. Let me say, Mr Mayor, that as a matter of principle, I think no one can disagree with the proposition that decisions about Wirral and this city region are better made by elected representatives here than ministers and civil servants in Whitehall. I think that principle is, is, is sound and, and should be supported. And clearly, uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that the uh, that action was needed to deliver devolution in the English regions, particularly in the, the likes of events uh, in Scotland in the wake of the independence referendum. So, Mr. Mayor, while whilst my group will certainly be supporting the, the proposed devolution deal, I do have a number of, of um, kind of reservations, really, which I think it, it's only fair to kind of put on the table. Um, that I just want to briefly mention. I mean, first of all, Mr. Mayor, the idea that that you that the government just simply invites local areas to submit proposals around devolution and you agree you agree them on a first come to the first serve basis strikes me as being a, a pretty damp way to um, deliver this policy. But clearly those at the back of the queue, inevitably, uh, will get less resource than those at the front. It, it would have in my view, have been far more sensible to have for the government to have treated all areas of England equally and come up with a coherent plan for all the regions within England instead of this mad scramble that we've seen in the last few months of groups of city regions, counties, etc., getting together to submit their uh, proposals for a finite cost of money. Secondly, Mr. Mayor, um, I think the way this, this has been done. Um, you know, by the government. They made it clear that those areas which don't get the devolution deals agreed before the comprehensive spending review are likely to get less money, less resources, once the, the funding drawbridge uh, goes up at the end of November. And, then, and again, this has meant there's simply been no time to do proper consultation with our residents and also to undertake pilot projects around devolving some of these powers Instead, we've got this small window, we've been given a small window around the CSR and the chances of the state for them to conclude our deal. And thirdly, Mr Mayor, I think the way the government has handled the governance issue is, again, um, far from uh, ideal. You know, I've said on many occasions that I find it perverse that on one hand the government preaches localism, um, but on the other hand, we're not being trusted to decide what is the most appropriate model of governance for Wirral, for the city region. Um, I don't believe, believe that one size fits all. Uh, there are other models around that could have been considered, uh, but what has actually happened is the government effectively held a gun to our heads <coughs> around the Metro Mayor model, um, which for me smacks more of, of, of a big brother approach than really trusting local people to make this, this, this decision uh, for themselves. And fourthly, um, you know, these devolution deals, Mr Mayor, as we all know, are being done against the background of unprecedented cuts by the government to the budgets of local councils. If you look at the um, reports on the agenda tonight, you'll see that the six councils in, in this city region collectively have suffered cuts of um, nearly 1.2 billion by 2020. Uh, now, whilst the devolution deal will give us some new money um, for helping us to grow our economy. The idea that somehow this will compensate for the, you know, for the savage cuts in services around older people, children's social care, leisure, highways, and all the other local services that this council provides is, is palpable nonsense. And we will continue to make the case, notwithstanding this deal, that the government's austerity policy towards local government is morally wrong unfair and should be reversed. Yeah. So Mr Mayor, it's against this background that we should consider the devolution proposals before us. And I believe that notwithstanding all of the caveats that I've mentioned, this is the best deal that we can negotiate in these difficult circumstances. Mr Mayor, if you look at the, the deal itself and the, 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 the text is before all members tonight, 
Um, it will give the city region a single investment fund of around 900 million over 30 years to fund projects which grow our economy. It will give us new powers around skills so that we can ensure that local people can have the best chance of securing job opportunities. It will give us new powers to decide bus routes and set fares, which put the needs of our residents before the profits of the private bus operators. Yeah. It will give us a long-term special rail grant so we can procure new state-of-the-art rolling stock for our rail network. And we've got agreement from the government to give us the freedom for the first time to use the income from toll tolls to reduce toll levels for local residents instead of the relentless rise in the tolls we've seen in recent years as a result of the very restrictive legislation currently in place. Mr Mayor, the deal also sets out some important new powers in areas such as business support, European funding, continuation of free port status, the future of employment support programmes, city regions cultural assets, the establishment of a land commission, um, and also a, a very important study around generating low carbon from the River Mersey. Mr. Mayor, finally, on governments, you know, I say consistently that the prize has to be worth the price. I'm not a fan of the Metro Mayor. I would have liked to have looked at other governance models, but as I said, the governments have uh, prohibited uh, us from doing that. Nevertheless, I think the benefits we're getting from this, this package of measures on, on balance uh, are, are, is worth supporting our change to the governments. I can just. Um, just move just go on one more The deal does propose a directly elected mayor, which will be established in May 2017, and a cabinet system. The mayor will be required to consult the cabinet on key policies and budgetary matters, and can be blocked if two thirds of the constituent members disagree. That's in line with the other agreements that I mentioned that Manchester have negotiated and elsewhere. There will be scrutiny arrangements put in place, the details still to be agreed. But can I make it clear that my group will not be supporting the Lib Dem amendments um, to introduce a London style assembly, as it would mean establishing a body of 51 elected members? Now, this would be, I think, hugely expensive. The, the, the price tag of the London assembly is £2.8 million a year, and I would rather spend that money on creating jobs and bringing the investment yeah, 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 yeah. on, on the 51 elected members. Finally, Mr Mayor, this is phase one of devolution. The government have made it clear that they welcome further proposals around additional areas, uh, and I, I believe it's, it's right we'll take up that opportunity. So in conclusion, as I've made it clear, this is not the ideal way in which I believe devolution should be rolled out. Frankly, it does smack of political opportunism, but as I said, I think pragmatically, we have got the best deal that we can for Wirral and the city region, and it's now incumbent upon all of us to make sure this work works. Not least, I think there are some big challenges around to make sure we've got the capacity to deliver this deal and the new powers and funding. So taking all of these issues into account, I'm therefore asking council to approve this deal and agree the recommendations in paragraph 2.1 of the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
but also the need, in my view, to make sure the governance is right and taking account of things is right. The leader says we take a pragmatic decision in the report and in the world blow talks about getting us in the strongest possible position. I agree that things have had to be rushed, but also the picture that's painted of finance bring takes me back to a number of scenes from the past. First of all, in the 1980s when Michael Hesseltine came to Merseyside and was convinced that things had to be done on Merseyside and in many cities. And secondly, we probably have in our mind that picture that appeared of Mrs. Thatcher wandering across some factory sites in the northeast in the 1980s, looking at a scene of dereliction. Those are things that we're getting away from at last, and we have an opportunity. The question is, how are we going to manage that opportunity? How are we going to involve the local councils? How are we going to communicate and involve our residents? And for that reason, we've looked at the issue of governance. I particularly am keen to see the investment fund, and I noticed that in the documents, reference is made to Cornwall. And I have read the Cornwall, de Cornwall devolution deal as well. Uh, you might have trusted me to do that. But I looked at some of the differences and some of the comparisons. And yes, uh, Cornwall is benefiting from something like three times, perhaps less than three times the European money because of the scheme it qualifies for. It's got three times our European money. 220 million euros over the next few years compared to 603 for us. And they, they do benefit from having one council, I've emerged already, and one particular health body, one CCG. And like us, they're not getting involved in the police and fire at this stage. But I must admit, I must be one of the few members, and looking around the chain, but I'll be happy to be corrected. Perhaps the only surviving member is the wrong phrase, but the only member of this council now who was on the Merseyside County Council, which was abolished in 1985 and 86. What went wrong at that time was a feeling on behalf of ourselves that the council there was not so much working on our behalf, but interfering in things that we wanted to be sovereign over. So we have had to swallow a degree of sovereignty for this deal. And again, we have to take steps to protect that sovereignty, and I know that the governance arrangements require two-thirds of particular things. But the key thing that's interesting to me is the spatial strategy. The ability of the new mayor, once elected, to work with the council leaders admittedly, to draw up a spatial strategy and to, to have an idea of housing sites, employment sites and initiatives. Those need to be developed with the members in the boroughs. And there needs to be a way of involving all of us here in what might be or may not be being planned and to help us scrutinise the use of money. I know that there's a scrutiny process in the combined authority, but of course, like many scrutiny processes, the combined authority can say at the moment that if, in the interest of speed or public interest, a project must go ahead, it can't be called in for scrutiny. And if we're adopting a model that reflects the combined authority, then we need to be cautious. I appreciate that there are many developments for us, if we will. The issue of the buses and the franchise, the trains and the grant, the greater sale of the tolls, even the power to reduce them. And in that document as well is the idea of merging back office functions across Merseyside, which you haven't yet detailed as a council. So, Mr. Mayor, there's a lot in the deal for us, a lot in the deal for our ambitions, but we need to get it right, and we need to get the governance right. We need to make sure that that openness and transparency that's promised actually does materialise. There's only a limited time over this year to get that right, and we need to be involved in that process. So I suggested, Mr. Mayor, an assembly which I know the leaders worried about the size of. Six parliamentary constituencies, seven, sorry, 17 constituencies, six councils. How many members might be involved? 46 to 51. Yes, we might argue about the numbers, and we're not necessarily going to be paid or salaried or anything like that, because we don't even know if the new Metro Mayor will have a salary. But in the interest of democracy, of spreading decision making, involving people, and consulting our residents, it has to be a government model that works. And that's what we're seeking, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Douglas. I am going to open this to the floor, but I would like to request mm -hmm. Councillor Douglas to speak first. Thank you. Thank you.
opportunity for us as a, an authority on behalf of our residents, uh, and that's the key thing for me, on behalf of our residents and their economic well-being, that this is a real opportunity. And again, I think the leader of the council has listed out um, quite fully in fact all those things that have been, uh, been achieved. And I'm sure we're all really interested to see how we can have said properly um, if asked around uh, those people that are finding it most difficult to access uh, work, uh, but one of the things that we were keen to do is to look at how local authorities could be, get involved in that particular process because, again, I think we all felt that there was a role for councils to play given the work we do with some of the most disadvantaged people in our community, communities anywhere. Also, the, uh, the investment uh, opportunities and the resources that come through for investment I think, again, are key to developing the long-term economic future for our residents. Mr. Mayor, I think that you will probably remember back in July when I proposed this the notice of motion which recommended that the Leader of Council advise the next meeting of the combined, the then next meeting of the combined authority to engage enthusiastically in the development of the Northern Powerhouse, provide clarity to the Council about the details of any of power and budget seeking from the government and to confirm its support for a directly elected Metro Mayor. At that point, Mr Mayor, I did, I did uh, pass on the conversations I had with, with ministers and the Secretary of State who made it clear that in those circumstances powers were being taken from Whitehall as opposed to being taken from the authority. But I'm sure I don't mean to need to remind councillors the motion was emphatically voted down at that point by both councillors. And I don't know what caused the master, the master slide conversion, but I'm pleased that Councillor Davis and his Labour colleagues are finally getting with the programme and supporting the government's ambition to rebalance our economy from London to the South East by the creation of a Northern Powerhouse. Again, back in July, I urged the council leader that it was time to get on with the job, contribute to the creation of the Northern Powerhouse, and direct the future economic prosperity of rural and the region. And I'm pleased he's eventually taken that advice. And however, Mr. Mayor, I am conscious that he was, wasn't able to deliver a promise he made to the readers of the book back in May when he wrote a now rather embarrassing opportunity article on why the Chancellor got it wrong over a health and mercy side, in which he stated, if there is no other way of securing needed devolution from Whitehall to Merseyside, then I believe the people should decide. That means a referendum. And no doubt, um, so that's another promise that has moved Mr. anyhow, it's not the yeah. yeah. embarrassing or rather horrific about tracking you today. Clearly, Phil got the
general point, the general point, and I'm confused at the point that's being made, I think is a sound one, and it would benefit all those in authority over us to actually consider the general point about the need to include and involve more people from around the boroughs. So, when, so I would finally say we need to ensure the mechanism in place that all voters from all political parties are able to make their views known and that there is true engagement and consultation incorporated in the evolving government's model. In conclusion, Mr. Mayor, I would like to say, as, a, as a, an opposition party, if you will, uh, or a group of people on the council, that we should congratulate the leader of the council when he does something right. Of Councillor Philip Davis 
the leader of the council, we wouldn't have made the progress we have so far because of his commitment, loyalty and vision that we are where we are tonight. And I recommend to everybody in this council chamber tonight that you do give top support to this draft agreement. Thank you, Mr Mayor.
and in the backdrop of a trade union bill that will reduce their representation and for them to be able to do anything about the cuts that are being imposed on them by the Tory government. It, it, it is probably a deal, like it's being said now, uh, the best we can possibly do in these circumstances. The reason why you're talking about the governance and the reason why you're talking about representation um, because we have got six Labour controlled councils who will be part of the combined authority reporting to, to the elected mayor. The reason why we've got them six Labour councils is because the people voted for them six Labour councils. The reason why we've got no Tory MPs in Merseyside is because the people didn't want any Tory MPs in Merseyside. So just accept the mandate from the people and, and, and take the governance situation, which is not perfect, I do admit, but take that governance situation as it stands because the people don't want Tory leaders in the council and the people don't want Tory MPs on Merseyside for very good reasons and they're mainly based around the cuts that are being imposed on us. But there's one item, which is my expertise really, in the, um, in the FE, uh, the, 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 the uh, future um, finance and education for adults that has been cut year in and year out by this Tory government where it's almost disappearing now that funding to support adults into further education is being absolutely decimated and then I notice in this devolution deal they've given us the powers to be able to manage the FE budgets but they're also excluding apprenticeships from that. I'd like to see negotiations in maybe phase two where apprenticeships are involved in that because I think it's so important for our area that we do have the powers to negotiate regarding apprenticeships and the future workforces that are going to come in, uh, in into our authority. So I'd like that to, to see that happen uh, in stage two. I'd like to see a lot more happen in stage two that's my particular area of expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Norwood. Councillor Norwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, there are probably really some worthwhile things contained in the evolution, but there's something else which worries me more, and I said so on my previous occasion. There is no democratic mandate with a constitution that seems to be coming forward. Whether or not it alters in the weeks ahead, I don't know. But at the moment, to have only one party from the whole of Merseyside represented in the decision-making body is absolutely wrong. It's a democratic deficit that need not be. And I hope that will be sorted out before the devolution takes place. But it is the reason, Mr. Mayor, that I am going to support the Liberal Democrat Amendment. We can talk about whether the numbers contained in there or how they're chosen. Uh, one can discuss those and decide on alternatives if they're worthwhile, but at least the principle is established in that amendment that all parties, hopefully, on will can be represented in the decision-making body and are not merely uh, shoved off sideways to a scrutiny committee which would be composed mainly of the one party uh, and even uh, if they were as they are now, the, uh, the uh, actual running of the uh, body completely uh, of the same party. That can't be right, and that's why I will be supporting the amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Trina Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to thank our leader, Councillor Phil Davis, on his continued hard work on secure some of the best deal that he could from what was on offer for Wirral and the Liverpool City region. Had this been devolved from the Labour government, however, we'd have seen further devolved powers to Wirral Council, and that's what I would like to see in the future, Mr. Mayor. Powers being devolved to the lowest, most local level, nearest to the people of Wirral. Devolution, of course, is a labour value. It is about distributing power from the powerful to the people, from the very rich to the communities that need the power to create jobs, build homes, and provide.
provide good quality care. The cuts to local authority budgets have been devastating and have left many councils only able to deliver statutory services. And I want to see elected local councillors being empowered to take key decisions regarding configuration and provision for all key public services that serve their area and not just to scrutinise in which this is what we're doing now. But we do have to be extremely careful and mindful that this devolution deal, as some have quoted, is nothing but a poison chalice. And behind the Chancellor's crooked smile, when he offers devolution, his whole intention is to hand over responsibility for cuts to councillors. This, Mr Mayor, is something we do not want to see happen. I support this motion. motion.